As hype for AMD's new generation of desktop processors and graphics cards continues to build, the question on everyone's mind is can they compete with Intel when it comes to performance? Everyone knows that recent history has shown AMD doesn't necessarily target the enthusiast market with their releases, preferring to attempt to undercut Intel and Nvidia when it comes to price instead. Hopes are high that Ryzen will actually turn out to be a performance beast and introduce some real competition to the market. But all this has gotten me thinking, when was the last time AMD was really on top? For that, we actually need to time warp all the way back to May of 2006 with the introduction of AMD's $1,000 flagship, the FX62. What made this processor great and how does it hold up to today's standards? Let's find out. Things were a little bit different 10 or 11 years ago. DDR2 memory was just becoming the standard, with Intel having adopted it already, but AMD lagging a little bit behind. With the move to the new AM2 socket and away from the aging socket 939, AMD took the opportunity to completely overhaul their memory controller as well. The AM2 platform introduced support for DDR2 800, which was by far the biggest change to the new generation of CPUs and motherboards, as the new socket actually only added one pin, up to a whopping 940. The thing that really pushed the performance envelope, however, was the fact that this chip was a true dual core, running at a significantly higher clock speed than anything Intel had to offer at the time. In 2005 and early 2006, the majority of Intel's lineup consisted of Pentium 4 chips, single core processors whose original introduction was in 2002. Intel was content to slowly release new iterations of the Pentium 4 with slightly higher clock speeds for years. And although they did move to DDR2 in 2004, the Pentium 4 architecture remained largely unchanged. Yes, hyperthreading was also introduced along the way, but logical cores do not equal physical cores when it comes to raw processing power. When AMD introduced the Socket 939 FX60 in January of 2006, and then the FX62, Four months later, it finally gave Intel the swift kick in the pants they needed to move forward with their now venerable core line, the Core 2 Duo. Yes, dual core Xeons existed before this, as did dual core mobile chips, but the bread and butter of Intel stack at that time was their desktop line, and they were certainly feeling the pressure from AMD beating them to the punch by a significant margin. The only dual core Intel had on the market at that time was the $1,000 Pentium 965 Extreme Edition, and the FX62 outpaced the 965 in almost every benchmarking test, despite the fact that the 965 held almost a full 1 GHz clock speed advantage. In fact, in a 2006 article, PC Perspective said there is no doubt the FX62 is the fastest desktop CPU we've ever tested, and PC Magazine ran a headline that stated, the FX62 reigns king. The FX62 was marketed towards enthusiast gamers, and although its 90 nanometer manufacturing process and 125 watt TDP weren't the best around at the time, its 2.8 gigahertz clock speed, best in class instructions per clock, and rich feature set made it the cream of the crop for about a year after release. So, how does it stack up against today's best? Unfortunately, there are currently no AMD processors on the market that retail for $1,000 that I could compare it to. However, I do know of another $1,000 processor that may be interested in battling it out for the title. It's right over there. Say hello to the Intel i7-6900K, retailing for about $1,050 at the time of shooting. This baddie is rocking a few more cores and threads than was state-of-the-art in 2006, with a higher base clock as well. Of course I don't expect this to be a fair fight, and yes, we know who the winner will be. But let's see how far we've come in 10 years, shall we? Charts!
have to say running modern CPU benchmarking tests on the FX62 was a bit time consuming. I mean, Cinebench alone took about eight minutes to complete, but it still runs all of them. It still finishes all of them, and it never hangs its head while doing so. Of course, this isn't really a chip that you can reasonably still use for modern gaming, but when I had this up and running on my test bench, Chrome still loaded in a reasonable amount of time. I was able to fairly easily download and install some new drivers and benchmarking programs, and I ran into exactly zero issues while setting things up. I even had to do a fresh Windows install to get the system to function normally, and it handled it like a champ, getting the whole process done in a little less than half an hour. There's a reason these chips still sell for $130 to $150 on eBay, and that's because they're now collector's items. The FX62 was a huge victory for AMD at the time, pushing Intel to innovate and moving the entire industry forward in huge leaps. I know it will go up there on my product shelf and be displayed proudly. Thanks for watching this look back at the AMD FX62. Don't forget to get subscribed to the channel and I'll see you next time.